Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to use cancellation, also called cross cancellation, when multiplying and dividing fractions. We will start with multiplying fractions and then move on to dividing fractions. Cancellation is a way to simplify a problem before we multiply. Now remember, when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. So multiply the numerators, the top numbers, and then multiply the denominators, the bottom numbers. We use cancellation before we multiply straight across. This strategy gives us smaller numbers in value to work with and easier numbers to work with. Let's jump into our examples, starting with number one, where we have seven tenths times five sixths. When we use cancellation, again, we need to look to simplify the problem before we multiply. Look for common factors other than one diagonally. That way we can divide those numbers by that common factor in order to simplify the problem before multiplying. Think of it like simplifying fractions, but we are looking diagonally. So let's look at seven and six first. Are there any common factors between seven and six other than one? No, the only common factor is one. So we can't use cancellation with the seven and the six. Now let's take a look at the 10 and the five. Are there any common factors other than one between 10 and five? Yes, five is a common factor, and it happens to be the greatest common factor. So let's divide 10 and five by five. So 10 divided by five gives us two. Five divided by five gives us one. Now we have a simpler problem. We have smaller numbers in value to work with. So let's multiply straight across now, starting with the numerators. Seven times one is seven. Now for the denominators, two times six gives us 12. Seven twelfths is our final answer, and it is in simplest form. The only common factor between seven and 12 is one. So we are done, seven twelfths. Now let's go through that problem without using cancellation in order to see the difference. So we have seven tenths times five sixths. So let's multiply straight across again without using cancellation. We will start with the numerators. So seven times five is 35. Now for the denominators, 10 times six is 60. So we get 35 sixtieths, which is different than when we used cancellation. Well, 35 sixtieths isn't in simplest form, so let's simplify. Are there any common factors between 35 and 60 other than one? Yes, five, and five is the greatest common factor. So let's divide 35 and 60 by five in order to simplify. 35 divided by five is seven. 60 divided by five is 12. So our final simplified answer, seven twelfths. The only common factor between seven and 12 is one, so that is in simplest form and we are done. So we get seven twelfths that way as well. So do we have to use cancellation in order to multiply fractions? No, but it is a good strategy to be familiar with and use when possible. It can be helpful. Let's move on to number two, where we have 15 20 seconds times 11 twelfths. Let's look to use cancellation. And again, we look diagonally. So let's take a look at 15 and 12 first. Do we have any common factors other than one? Yes, three is a common factor and the greatest common factor. So let's divide them both by three. 15 divided by three is five. 12 divided by three is four. Now let's take a look at 22 and 11. Are there any common factors other than one between 22 and 11? Yes, 11, and 11 is the greatest common factor. So let's divide 22 by 11. 
that gives us two. And then 11 divided by 11, that gives us one. Now we can multiply straight across and you can see that we have much simpler and easier numbers to work with when we multiply straight across. So let's start with the numerators. Five times one gives us five. Now for the denominators, two times four gives us eight. So we get five eighths. The only common factor between five and eight is one. So we are in simplest form and we are done. For number two, that problem was much simpler to work through after we used cancellation. We had five times one and two times four instead of 15 times 11 and 22 times 12. Now, did we have to use cancellation? No, we could have gone straight across and done 15 times 11 and then 22 times 12 and then simplified. But the cancellation made it easier and simpler as far as multiplying straight across. So there's how to use cancellation when multiplying fractions. Let's move on to division. So here are our examples for using cancellation when it comes to division problems involving fractions. Now again, cancellation is a way to simplify the problem before multiplying. And remember, when we have a division problem involving fractions, we end up multiplying. Let's jump into number one, where we have four ninths divided by eight fifteenths. We can't use cancellation quite yet. We can't use it right away. We use cancellation when multiplying fractions. So we need to wait until we go through the steps we use to divide fractions. Keep, switch, flip, or keep, change, flip. So let's keep the first fraction of four ninths, switch to multiplication, and then flip the second fraction of eight fifteenths. So 15 is now the numerator and eight is now the denominator. Now we can multiply straight across, but before doing so, we can look to use cancellation. When we use cancellation, we look diagonally for common factors other than one that we can divide by. Think of this like simplifying fractions, but we are looking diagonally. So for number one, we look at four and eight, and then nine and 15. Let's look at four and eight first. Are there any common factors other than one that we can divide four and eight by? Yes, let's use the greatest common factor of four. So we can divide four and eight by four. Four divided by four is one. Eight divided by four, is two. Now we can take a look at nine and 15. Are there any common factors other than one that we can divide nine and 15 by? Yes, three is a common factor between nine and 15, and it's the greatest common factor. So let's divide nine and 15 by three. Nine divided by three is three. 15 divided by three is five. Now we can multiply straight across and we have smaller numbers in value to work with, easier numbers to work with. Let's start with the numerators. One times five is five. Now for the denominators, three times two is six. So we end up with five sixths. The greatest common factor between five and six is one. So we are in simplest form and this is our final simplified answer. Again, five sixths. Now let's work through that problem without using cancellation and see what happens. So keep switch flip. So keep four ninths, switch to multiplication and then flip eight fifteenths. So now we have 15 eighths. Let's multiply straight across. Four times 15 is 60. Nine times eight is 72. So we get 60 70 seconds. Now that's different than the answer above. That's because we haven't simplified yet. Are there any common factors between 60 and 72 other than one? Yes. 
The greatest common factor between 60 and 72 is 12. So let's divide both of them by 12. 60 divided by 12 is 5. 72 divided by 12 is 6. So you can see that we get 5 sixths that way as well. We get the same answer either way. Now, do we have to use cancellation? No, but it's a good strategy to be familiar with and use when possible. It can be helpful. Let's move on to number two, where we have 12 divided by 6 sevenths. Let's keep switch flip. So keep 12, and I'm going to write it in fractional form. That way we have a numerator and a denominator, and we can multiply straight across. Remember, we can rewrite any whole number in fractional form by putting it over 1. Then we can switch to multiplication and flip. So 7 sixths. Now we can multiply straight across, but before doing so, we can look to use cancellation. So let's look diagonally for common factors other than 1. Let's look at 12 and 6 first. Are there any common factors other than 1 that we can divide by? Yes, 6 is the greatest common factor between 12 and 6, so let's divide by 6. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 6 divided by 6 is 1. Now let's take a look at 1 and 7. Are there any common factors between 1 and 7 other than 1 that we can divide by? No. So we can't use cancellation going that way. So now we're ready to multiply straight across. Let's start with the numerators. 2 times 7 is 14. Now for the denominators. 1 times 1 is 1. So we end up with 14 over 1, which is 14. And that's our final answer. So there you have it. There's how to use cancellation when we have multiplication or division problems involving fractions. Now, can we use cancellation with every single problem? No. We have to have common factors other than 1 that we can divide by diagonally. And do we have to use cancellation in order to get to the correct answer? No, but it is a good strategy to be familiar with and it can be helpful. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.